All right, welcome to the podcast. This podcast is powered by A Football Journey. I've got someone that I know uh, very well here. Uh, he is the world famous Josh Morrow. He plays defensive end for the Arizona Cardinals, and he is my brother. And I couldn't be more proud than this guy. And it's been awesome getting to watch him grow and, and improve. Josh, how you doing? Hey, Derek, what's up, man? I appreciate you having me. All right, hey, to start us off, I'm going to tell a, a quick story of uh, – of, of you and me uh when we were when we were kids you know uh people probably don't know this but uh you've got we're, it's a big family it's 10 of us you know if you count our parents and and uh and we went to we went to orlando and we went to to universal studios and that whole deal and it was time to leave and so it's like i don't know six in the morning we're, we're, we're trying to leave at six in the morning and you and i josh we got up early and we went down to the car and uh, got our bags and stuff all packed, and so we're all ready. It's all in the car, and then we went back up to the room, and we're gonna go wake everybody up, right? And uh, and we went up, we went up to that door, and we were just banging on that door. And uh, it was back when Tommy Boy came out, and and we're doing the bit about, uh, hey, room service, you want a mint for your pillow, and and uh, <laughs> and then finally that door starts to open, and you and I both start shoving our way into that door, and we we get in there. And we realized, hey, this isn't the right room. <laughs> so, so then we run. I mean, we took off. You were probably maybe 10, 11. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. And, and we took off. And we ran. We just went and sat in the car like nothing happened. <laughs> just waited for everyone to come down. It was incredible. Oh, man. It would be awesome if right now that guy that we pushed our way in, you know, we pushed our way into the room. This guy's holding a towel around his waist. It's like 6 in the morning. He just woke up. And he probably didn't know what what on earth was going on. <laughs> It'd be great if he was listening right now. And he's like an, a huge Arizona Cardinals fan. He's like, man, Josh Morrow, 10, 10 15 years ago, shoved his way yeah. into my room. Kicked his door and went to the <laughs> kids. So. Okay, Josh, uh, I'm going to ask you a question here. Uh, now, uh, there was a moment on uh, All or Nothing where uh, – you know that that TV show on on, uh, on uh, Amazon. If you haven't seen it, you got to go see it. Uh, but but there's a moment on All or Nothing where Tyron Matthew he tears his ACL in the game, and you guys saw him get carted off. And then it, it pans over to you and Calais, and you guys are holding hands, and you have your head down. Uh, tell me tell me about that. Um, you know, just in that moment, we were you know I think we were on a nine ten game win streak. Um, you know, we were, we were really clicking as a unit um, on all in all phases, uh, offense, defense, special teams. We really had, um, you know, it was a special it was a special season. You know, even though it didn't end the way we would have liked it to, just that entire year was just a, a great experience of uh, of what you can do. You know, when you're unified together. But uh, in that moment, man, it sucked. You know, Ty um, guy's very, extremely passionate, extremely vocal. Um, he backs up everything he says. He uh, He's in there year round working, you know. He's not he's not just one of those guys that you see on TV and uh he doesn't just show up and, and play, you know. He puts so much into it. And he's so uh invested emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally and so just watching him go down. I mean, he he had an all pro he was an all pro safety that year. Um he was really one of our leaders of our team, not just our defense. And so in that moment, you know, me and Calais just uh just said a prayer for him, man, just cuz uh, you just hate to see anyone go down the football field, but especially someone like uh, Tyron. And so, um, you know, we're very open about our faith, and uh, you know, it's it's something that we, you know unifies us. And so, we just took a moment, just uh, you know, forgot to put his hands over him at that time. Man, that is awesome. You know, that's uh, when I was watching All or Nothing. You know, I really got this message of. Uh, family and that that's kind of the culture that you guys have there and and when I saw that moment you know that's something that you do for family you know is it is that you care about them uh not just not just because they can score touchdowns or or make interceptions but because of of who they are and and that you guys are a family and a team and that and that you pray for each other and that's that's their well-being I mean that's that's just an awesome thing another thing that kind of uh I thought was really awesome was uh uh, B.A., Bruce Arians, uh, the head coach, Arizona Cardinals, uh, he, on that show, he's got a thing where he says, he says, hey, you know, he's talking to his assistant coaches and he says, hey, if you guys miss a recital, if you miss a, uh, a one of your kids' football games, one of your kids' recitals, he goes, I'll fire you. 
He goes, work is always going to be here, but your kids won't, you know? And so he's talking to his coaches and saying, hey, you got to take care of your family too. And I was just wondering, uh, does that does that ever seep over into what you see on the football field and, and kind of the culture that you guys have there? No, absolutely. Um, you know, B.A., uh, you know, specifically, he, you know, he'll coach you or, or teach you, you know, really tough. You know, he'll, uh, he'll say things to motivate you or if, you know, you, you make mental, a mental mistake, you know, he'll let you know. And um, we have an accountability sheet every day, uh, beginning of the day before special teams. If you had a mental error, your name and, or your number and your mistake is on the board. And um, it's not a moment of embarrassment. It's just a moment of uh, accountability to each other. And so obviously you don't want to be on the sheet. You don't want your number up there if it's not anything positive. And so it's just uh, it's an accountability that we have towards each other. And it's also to, um, you know, keep your best foot forward at all times and to be mentally sharp. And um, as far as the family aspect goes, um, I've been blessed to be with two organizations that are both um, very, I always say almost college-like, uh, the locker room. Um, you know, not that we don't all hang out uh, outside of football and uh, do a lot of other things, but whenever we're there and whenever we're together, um, you know, everyone is just very motivating to each other. And, uh, you know, there's so many inspirations just in, just in the locker room amongst uh, our teammates. And so, uh, like I say, everyone's very open with um, with faith. We have lots of you know different talks, polit- you know politics, sports, whatever it may be. But no one gets offended. No one gets uh, you know disgruntled towards anybody else based on their beliefs or what they think. And it's just it's a really healthy um, work and also uh, relationship that we have over there in the locker room. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, we were. You know, I'm a high school football coach. You know this, Josh, and I, I'm the offensive coordinator at Princeton High School. And we we had a moment where we let our kids talk about family, and and our quarterback stood up there and he talked about his mom and how she holds him accountable, and how and how that is what family members do for each other. And that's 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 cool that that you brought that up about uh, the accountability sheet, you know, and that and that you're accountable to your family, you know, and 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 that it's a team and it's a group and and it's a family and and when you know, I tell, I tell, you know, my players this, you know, I'm a dad and I'm accountable to my kids. And when I make decisions, I'm not thinking about, Hey, what's best for me. I'm thinking about, Hey, what's going to be best for my family, you know? And, and my wife holds me accountable and, uh, and it's just a, an awesome dynamic. Uh, and, and in speaking about that, here's another story. I hope you notice I'm wearing my Arizona Cardinals shirt, you know, in the last, yeah, the last time, actually not the last time, but I guess another time when I wore this shirt is you were playing, uh, this was two years ago, uh, Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. And I'm at the, you know, we're at, we're at, uh, the, the stadium out there in Phoenix, incredible. And, and an awesome game. The Packers came back, they tied it, sent the game to overtime. So now we're in overtime, and uh, everybody's boy Larry Fitzgerald catches a catches a ball and takes that thing like eighty yards, right, and gets it to like the five, and then and then they they run a reverse, and Larry runs into the end zone and scores the game winning touchdown. The, the stadium is packed, and every single person in that stadium is just chanting Larry, Larry. After the game, we go. Uh, you know, as as you were your family, and so we're gonna go meet you when you come out of the locker room. So they let us down into like the special area of the stadium, and we're down there. And and Larry Fitzgerald, he comes out a little bit before you, Josh, and uh, I just look over at him, and uh, and he's got a baby, and he's just he just gives his baby a big kiss. And I was just thinking, like, man, that is Larry Fitzgerald scoring touchdowns and kissing babies. Man, this guy is an all around do everything, you know, my you know, he's my type, he's everybody's type of guy. Yeah. Uh, there was an article I read where uh where 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 Larry Fitzgerald was asked to move to inside receiver so they can block more. Well, uh that's a big ask for, you know, this guy is a future Hall of Famer and he and his coach is coming to him and saying, "Hey man, uh I know it's nice catching balls outside there and, and blocking those little corners, but I want to move you in and make you block, you know, have you block some big guys and throw the ball to you still, but but have you block? And and Larry just like jumped on that and was like, hey, any way that I can help the team better, I'll do that, you know. And and uh, and you see, I mean, there's a great highlight of him uh, where his teammate catches, it. he's running down the field, he pancakes the dude on the sideline, and then they run in the end zone and celebrate. I was trying to find that clip. I mean, it's incredible. But but tell us about uh, Larry Fitzgerald a little bit, kind of his leadership and and what that looks like. Does that? I mean, is that? Am I right in thinking that's kind of who, who he is? No, absolutely. Um, 
I think not only doing it for the team, but also at a point in his career where he's, you know, you got to swallow your pride. You know, um, if you're used to being the guy on the numbers, you know, hitting the the, uh, the route tree, you know, doing doing all the primary routes uh, for your career. And like you said, he could have retired, you know, four or five years ago and still been a Hall of Famer. So uh, I think not only did it prolong his career where he could still be a very um, – an elite player still uh, at his at his age, and um, but also that just kind of um, you know is, is just one of many examples of the selflessness that he shows. You know, um, uh, like I said, you know, same thing with with Ty, and you know, it's funny, it's just a bunch of these you know great elite, you know, world class players. You know, they have a lot of similarities. You know, Larry's there, uh, doesn't miss any workouts when we have voluntary. You know, we have a t- voluntary time; no one has to be there. And Larry's there. He's running, doing everything the young guys are doing. <laughs> uh, lifting more than ever. You know, all he wants to lift more than all the receivers. He still wants to run with the, the young guys. And um, him moving inside and him blocking. You know, he's embraced that. I mean, he he goes out there like you said. He, he'll put his hands on people, and he he's he's crafted himself. You know, to become good at what he's been asked to do. And that's that's the sign of, I think of, of greatness. Um, no matter what part of your career you're at, or what your uh, what your ability is. Uh, your willingness to do whatever it is to help the team be successful, and then in the end, helping yourself be successful. And Larry embodies that uh, in everything he does, really, um, day in and day out. Man, that is awesome. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald is somebody that that I think young receivers should really model themselves after. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back. This podcast is powered by A Football Journey. A Football Journey is a hands-on character curriculum utilized by coaches all over the country. For more information, go to www.afootballjourney.com. All right, here we are back. This is A Football Journey podcast. This podcast is uh, uh, a good one because we've got Josh Morrow here. Uh, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions, Josh. Uh, this one's about you. We just got done talking about Larry Fitzgerald and his selflessness and and how you know people should model themselves after that, and I think you've done that. You know, you see these great guys like uh, one of your favorites, uh, Dirk Nowitzki. You know, he takes less money so that his team has a better chance of winning the the championship. And every coach wants that guy. You know, and and uh, from what I've seen, you know, you growing up and knowing you and who you are, man, you're that guy. Uh, you you gave an interview the other day where you talked about how. You know, they're like, hey, Josh, how do you feel now that you're a starter? You know, and you just said, hey, look, that stuff doesn't matter to me. What what matters is that I'm helping my team. Uh, tell tell me a little bit more about that. Um, I've just come to realize, you know, and um, it didn't take long. But in this profession, yeah, everyone wants to talk about, well, it's a, it's a business. You know, you got to get yours. You got to milk it out for what you want. You know, chase your dream. You know, whatever it is, you know, whatever uh, material thing that, you, you know, that you feel like you can obtain from this, but the guys that last and the guys that um, are are great players at what they do in this league are the guys that just just show up and and do their job. And I think, uh, especially you know, as a, as a defensive and a defensive lineman, people you know see uh, see big numbers. You know, you know, by guys like you know JJ Watt and Miller, which is great. You know, it's it's absolutely those guys are again those guys are world class players. So uh, they play at that level. But um, you know, just just there's more to it than making the play. Those guys don't just make plays, uh, you know, doing their own thing, going cowboy out there, going out of their gap. The guys that make plays and are very successful and are great players, they're just doing their job at the highest level. You know, they're not asking, uh, you know, JJ to get A to C gap. You know, he'll have B gap, but he's going to tear up that B gap, and he's going to end up making a play just because he's doing his job. And so. Um, even, you know, from my time in Pittsburgh and now even here in Arizona, just the best players that I play with, they really just master their craft. And you can't really worry about uh, anybody else's job, how, you know, where the run bust in the defense, the, you know, just get your gap, you know, get your, your containment, get your rush lane. Uh, you know, if I'm dropping, get my coverage. And um, if you really just take care of your responsibility, everything falls into place. You'll have all the success. You'll get all everything you want. But if you just do what you're asked to do, and it helps the team. And uh, I shared with someone the other day, man, you go deep in the playoffs, you know, everyone, everyone's getting con. You know, you may not be able to stay where you're at. Um, you know, you look at the Broncos the other year. Malik, you know, they won the Super Bowl. Malik Jackson signs the biggest deal for a defensive tackle. And that was his first year starting. I think he had five or six sacks. And he yeah. signed an $80 million deal. So, uh, Jared, um, no, excuse me, uh, Derek Wolf, their other defensive end, he signed a 
four year fifty million dollar extension that season while they're having the success they're having. And so um, if you chase team accolades and team success and the uh, the collaboration of wins and losses rather than what are my tackles, what are my sacks, my attack, you know, my my pass deflections. If you chase the wins, man, that stuff takes care of itself. And I've really bought into that and I try to embody that and share that with the young guys too, that while this is a business and you need to make the most of it while you can, the guys that are the most successful, the guys that stay the longest and are the most successful as well on the business side of things are the ones that just do exactly what the team asks them to do. Yeah, that is awesome. That is true. And it's in, it's kind of ironic and kind of counterintuitive to think uh, that when, when I have an attitude of servanthood, my an attitude of, hey, what can I do to help the team? And hey, here's my role. My role is B-gap. I'm going a, I'm to a tear B-gap up. And that, that's, and that hey, this is your spot and this is what you're going to do, that all of a sudden all those other things come. That's an, that's an incredible point. All right, Josh, here's a little more personal. Now, a little story about you. Uh, just growing up, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, you were not always the beast that I see before myself right now. You know, there was a time, Josh, where you were just a little a little guy, and and uh, and there was no, at least in my eyes, there was no, uh, there was no, there was no telling, Josh, that this is how far you would go. Uh, but I, I, I look back and I realize there were some, there were some signs. Like for example, I remember we were all sitting on the couch. Uh, we we're probably watching SpongeBob or something. And then, and then here comes, you know, we're like, where's Josh? And then, uh, and then, and then you just come busting in out of the garage, just dripping sweat. And we're like, what have you been doing? And you're like, I'm getting a lift in. What do you think? You know? And, and that's just kind of, it was your mentality of like, I'm a, Hey, I'm a fixing to go in here and crush this weight room or, or, uh, you know, I'd be coming down the stairs and I'd look out that front window. You'd be out shooting hoops, you know, and 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 so kind of tell us a little bit about that journey uh, where you went from L.D. Bell High School in Bedford, Texas to Stanford U and uh, and to uh, the Steelers and then the Cardinals now. Yeah, I mean, like you were saying, I wasn't, um, you know, I, I, I played sports when I was younger. You know, I had a good, you know, I had a good understanding. I was, I was coordinated. You know, I knew, you know, I, I could, I could walk without tripping over my feet. But uh, no, I, I was never, you know, physically, uh, you know, the most athletic kid in my grade, or uh, you know, the fastest. I was pretty tall, but I was never the fastest. You know, started that probably in seventh grade, and um, I just liked that because it was. You know, it's quantitative. You could see the results. You could see you were getting stronger uh, by, by you know, just sheer numbers. So that was something that I just was interested in as as a younger age because I felt like it was something you can uh, measure your improvement in. But um, no, going through high school, uh, my junior year was was my first year playing varsity football, and I was a part time starter that year. Uh, my first year uh, with my hand in the dirt was my senior high school. I was the first year I ever played DN. I was an outside linebacker, inside linebacker, a quarterback, and receiver before that, and so. Uh, played one season there. Uh, Stanford luckily came by in the spring, and I wasn't even practicing. But they, you know, they said come out to a camp, get a better look at you. I went out there and um, performed well. And then, you know, the D line coach came to one of my high school games. I played well there. They offered me that night while I was you know, with my friends. That was a, that was a pretty cool experience. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was, it was a good time. <laughs> um, and then, um, but then getting to Stanford, man, you you start all over and. It's funny when people ask, you know, how, you know, how's the NFL? How fast and you know, big and strong are those guys? And the jump from high school to college is is much bigger gap, in my opinion, than, they, than the jump from college to the NFL. Uh, you're going from being 18 years old, uh, you know, best guy on the field probably in most games. You're, you know, you're senior year of high school, and then you go to college where it's it's the best from all over the country that have committed there you're playing against guys who have redshirted and they're only going their fifth six years of college at 23 24 years old yeah. you're 18 year old kid in the trenches with them and so uh it took a while man and uh, um i'll say you know even without the instantaneous success that uh most people that um although i didn't have the instantaneous instantaneous success that most people you know uh look for nowadays in most endeavors um, I, I really, and it is, you know, it sounds cliche, but I did fall in love with the process of it. Um, you know, I was with my best friends at Stanford. We were going out, pra practice was hard. We played in a power, uh, a power running offense. So we, we as defense, we were playing, you know, smash mouth football every single day. 
he didn't feel like doing it every day, but <laughs> you go out there, you go out there with your teammates, you go through the lifting weights, the winter workouts, the spring football, the training camp, and um, you just take it one day at a time. And that's the biggest deal. I'm in training camp right now, and I, you know that's that's my mindset. I can't look. You know how many more days of camp do we have? How many more preseason games do we have? No, I'm, I'm focused on. <laughs> What do I got today? Okay, I got this meeting. Let me get this. Let me knock this meeting. Out, you know, <laughs> let me get this treatment. Because uh, you, you can, you can, you can get overwhelmed or you know anxious, thinking of overthinking about things. And so, um, I just think my transition. Um, you know, there was never a time that I really, um, I, I would say that I, I had a huge jump. It was just consistent growth. And um, like I said, I found things that I could measure personally uh, versus myself. Um, cause I think that helps you maximize, you know, rather than comparing yourself to somebody else who's built like you or around the same athleticism. And so, um, I just pushed myself every day and whatever it was, like I said, um, you know, the process of things is a bunch of small things that add up to the big things. You know, the big things are, you know, you go to the NFL, you're going to college, but there's a lot of, of very small details that add up and they accumulate every single day that, you know, you're either growing or you're hurting yourself. And so, um, I tried to embrace everything that we did from nutrition to uh, supplements to weightlifting to running, stretching, uh, core strength. And I just tried to get better at everything, you know, because why not? Why, why, would I, why would I try to stay the same at, at something when you can always improve? And so uh, I still live like that. Um, I talked to somebody this summer um, for NFL Network, and uh, they asked about the offseason. It's, it's the same thing every year, you know. It's uh, – <laughs> You're trying to, you know, re uh, retune and uh, refine some some things with your body and in your game, and um, you know, just try to get better at everything. That is awesome. That just such a uh, a narrow focus. You know, sometimes we all of us just kind of get this idea of I want to go, I want to be here, and then that's the focus is is making that big leap. And everything that you're talking about is, hey, don't even worry about here. Worry about this process of, of just getting better every day. What do I have today? I've got, I've got this meeting. Now I'm going to be perfect in this meeting. I've got this, I've got this drill. I'm going to be perfect in this drill. I, got, I have this gap on defense. I have the B gap. I'm going to be perfect in that gap. Instead of this idea of, hey, we've got to do, I've got to be everywhere. I've got to do all this stuff. It's like, let me be perfect in just these few things, man. And, that, and, and those little things all build uh, upon each other and that's man that's incredible and uh you live it man i've seen you know just watching that whole process and and how incredible it is to watch you grow in all of that has been amazing it's been amazing to see all right last question here i've got josh morrow this is the football journey podcast this podcast is powered by a football journey okay josh morrow here last question josh um i've, I've watched you i've watched you grow and you said you said this earlier. You know you weren't a starter on your uh, high school football team your junior year. Your junior year, you were a uh, you were a backup player that got to play. And you're, it wasn't until your senior year that you really got good. And then you went to Stanford and you had a couple setbacks too. You know you tore a hamstring, I think, pulled a hamstring or a groin. Um, and, but also at Stanford, you saw incredible highs. You know, you Pac-12 champions, uh, uh, played in four four of the BCS Bowls, the Fiesta Bowl, the Orange Bowl, the the uh, two Rose Bowls. I mean, an incredible, an incredible, incredible highs, but also some lows. And so uh, have you ever, along this long journey, did you ever uh, feel like giving up or, or quitting? Did you ever feel like this is too hard, it wasn't worth it? Um, there wasn't a time that I ever thought about quitting because it feels like everything, anything that happened, I always just thought about, okay, how can I fix this or how can I improve on this or how can I gain, you know, the accountability in this area of uh, whatever coach thought thought less of me or whatever, um, or not less of me, but just the whatever I was giving wasn't what they were looking for, what what our team needed at the time. Um there was a time going into my retro junior season, though. I was suspended for um, uh, the, the summer uh, quarter academically for an infraction of the judicial affairs process. And so I got to, I missed the summer conditioning. So I was, I was on my own training. I was up there with uh, Dave Spitz at Cal Strength. And um, that was a great time of, um, you know, kind of clarity of just, you know, you know, when something's taken away from you, you know, it's true. You, you realize what you, ha- what you have or what you had. Uh, depending on if, you, if you've lost it completely. And so 
at the time it was just temporarily um, uh, taken from me. But I uh, I trained that summer and then I, I came back. I was uh, I'll never forget. It was about a week before I was going to be eligible. I was going to run a conditioning test. I just lifted. I went out to the field late at night, like I had normally done, and um, started warming up a little bit. And then I was you know I was. I was like, I'm, I think I'm good. I'm, I'm going to run some striders just to get my, my conditioning in. And, you know, I kind of felt a little tight doing it, you know, whatever. Didn't think too much of it. Uh, continued, you know, just getting ready. And then that day when I went to uh, take the conditioning test at Stanford, I actually had, uh, you know, tweaked my hamstring. I almost, you know, pulled it a little bit. And so here I am. Uh, can't see my coaches for you know the entire summer. I I really and the funny thing is I had been working you know, extremely. I busted my you know busted my tail that summer. I improved in all my numbers, uh, all my testing. But I come back. I uh, you know I strain my hamstring. I can't practice now. And uh, you know I'm, I got my my guys. You know Ben and David Perry and Henry Anderson. You know they're out there taking all the reps. And uh, I'm supposed to come back as like a reinforcement. And I can't practice right away. And so. I remember just, uh, you know, just praying for, you know, God's presence and just, you know, the patience in my life because, I mean, I, I, I was really frustrated because the impression that I had given off was that I had been slacking off all summer, that I didn't take my training seriously, that I was out of shape, um, and I didn't care. And, you know, it, in the moments, I was so upset because none of those things were true, but now looking back at it, they had every reason to think those things, you know? And so that's why it was very frustrating for me. So that was a slow process. I'll never forget one of my coaches just, you know, he said, if we get anything out of you this year, it will be, you know, <laughs> it'll be a bonus. Uh -huh. uh, and I actually, that was the, that was the year we won the, we won the Rose Bowl. Year. We won the, we won the Pac-12. We won the Rose Bowl that year. Um, I wasn't, I didn't start a game that year, but I came off. I think I had uh, some like eight tackles for a loss and six, five or six sacks that year. And, made some big plays for us and in some big games. And um, then, you know, that season we wrapped it up with the, with the Rose Bowl. And, I, you know, I had a big game for us then. And um, we won, you know, a, a, def a defensive uh, defensive battled game. And um, I think that was just – I think that after that, man, I felt like there was really nothing that, you know, could could get in my way. Um, I felt like <laughs> that was just – that was a moment, you know. And that, that whole entire season uh, it really was make or break for me, you know. I could have gotten injured. A lot of things could have could have happened that year. And just being able to respond in that way and to show them, show my teammates, you know, first and foremost, my teammates, but then also show my coaches that, you know, what I had been doing and the fruit of my labor paid off eventually, you know, uh, what I actually had been doing got brought out to the light. Whereas initially um, the truth, you know, hasn't, ha wasn't revealed about myself or my character, or my preparation. And so, uh, I, I I never thought about quitting, but I was so frustrated. <laughs> you know, I, I was so frustrated at that time because, um, like I said, you know, only you know your own character. Yeah. Um, you know, you can try to you know express that and show it, um, but I didn't. I didn't have it. It wasn't a good look for me. And so uh, <laughs> I get that. But then you know, after that, man, um, then I just gained the you know the respect and the accountability from. I had it from my teammates all along, but. You know, from train from our trainers to our coaches, and then um, going to my fifth year was a lot smoother. It was more of you know me coming into my own at that time. Um, but no, I, I would I've never thought about quitting except for I did I did stop playing football in third grade after one practice. <laughs> I, came back, I came back in fifth grade though. I came back in fifth grade. <laughs> that is awesome. So when I was nine years old. So besides that, I came back at age eleven strong. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome man it is crazy you know and it's awesome to hear from you josh in that and that i think oftentimes people think oh man those nfl guys they just it was just an easy road man they just showed up they were better than everybody they've always been better than everybody and they just steamrolled and then they get offered these scholarships and they go to college and and uh, they've got a personal masseuse and everybody is carrying their book bags to class and some the lunch ladies are cutting the crusts off their sandwiches you know and they don't think that there's any struggle in that you know and yeah. and and it you know you have had the highest of highs man and you know had an incredible career and and done awesome stuff and i mean i've been i went to the rose bowl and watched you play and you've been gracious enough to take me along on some of these things and it's been awesome and 
Uh, but at the same time, there have been lows. There have been there have been lows. There have been setbacks, and there have been uh, times where you had to overcome. And those things just built resilience in you. And and uh, and you know, players out there now just need to know, hey, understand uh, that this is a journey. Okay, when you set out on the journey. Pray that the, that the road is long and full of adventure and full of knowledge because uh, you pull in your hamstring, that, that, that in the moment that was a really bad thing, but, it, but you said, man, after that, I just knew nothing could stop me. You know, nothing could stop me because I, I overcame the toughest. And now what else What else can they have for me? And uh, that's a really special thing. And that's what football brings out in people is this understanding that, that oh, hey, you know, life sends something at you and you, you overcome and you think, okay, I took the best, I took the worst that life could ever offer me and I still overcame. What can life do to me now? You know, and, and uh you're going to be prepared when you leave playing football, you know, and you're going to be a great dad and a great husband and all those things. And I think the same thing about the kids that I coach, they're going to be great dads and great husbands and just awesome people uh, because of this experience that they have. And you've, you've been blessed and gotten to, you know, through your hard work and your perseverance and your resilience and your character, you've gotten to uh, do it at the highest level for a long time. And, and it just keeps getting better and better. And, and it's, it's beautiful to hear you talk about just working on the process, you know, and, and this whole thing, man, just thanks. Thank you, Josh, for, for coming on the football journey podcast and, and, uh, talking with us, man, it is incredible for kids to get to hear, uh, your story. You've got a special story and, and, and you don't just, uh, do it for you, but you, uh, you give it, you pass it on to the, to the next one. You know, uh, I think about it like this, you know, uh, you you found a way to make it to be successful, and uh, sometimes people uh, who who become successful, it's like they pull the ladder up behind themselves and they say, "Hey, don't go this way. Go do that. Go that way." You know, but not you. You throw that ladder down to everyone behind you, and you say, "Hey, look. If you put the work in, if you focus on the process, if you're willing to overcome and not and not give up, if you understand that there's going to be times where it's going to be tough, you know, if you're willing to do all those things, you can be successful too. You know, and and that's awesome about you, Josh. And hey, man, I love you, bro. And I appreciate you. And, and, and thanks for coming on. No, I appreciate it too, Derek. Love you too, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, anytime, man, I'll be welcome to come back. <laughs> awesome, Josh. Thank you.